If you're considering buying an iGame or Colorful, which is the same brand, GPU, this is going to be the only video you need to make an informed decision. So welcome back Atomos Dream PSUs and let's cover those GPUs. Now, this is part of the little series I've making kind of covering all the more niche GPU brands and uh, a lot of those are very good so far. So a little introduction. What are Colorful and iGame GPUs? Well, iGame is just the name of a lineup of Colorful GPUs the same way a Strix is an Asus card. And the Colorful is the biggest Asian manufacturer and one of the biggest manufacturers in the world. The company itself has been around for around 30 years and in the early 2000s those cars were actually pretty popular here in Europe, which is where I'm from. Now today they're much less popular and pretty much only available through AliExpress and on the used market as well as in some already built PCs that gets imported, kind of like the Manly Gallardo GPUs I've had on the channel. Now the aesthetics of this card is very different from Asus, MSI and those brands in general, they are much more flashy and they appear, I think, to a more Asian uh, taste, probably, uh, which may be a negative, but if you have a nice PC in which to fit them, I honestly don't see it as a negative. Another plus side of that is you do get a lot of white GPUs, which nowadays are starting to get more popular even in mainstream brands, but especially a few years ago, getting a white GPU was very difficult. Very often you had to spray paint it yourself, which is why I have a tutorial on how to do it on the channel from back in the day very low quality tutorial. However, to this day, they're available and it's pretty nice to have them. Since it's a big brand, they also have very different designs and they also do make small cards. For example, right now, they have a single fan RTX 4060, which is very similar to what Palit and Gigabyte have done here, basically making a smaller footprint out of a very low power hungry card, which is nice. So they are expanding a bit and it's basically if they were an umbrella brand, basically covering most of the Asian market. Together probably, I want to say Galax is pretty popular there and also uh, Gainward slash Palit a little bit, even though Palit is a US-based company. But again, for these, I have dedicated videos on the channel. Another very Asian and very unique thing is they have a turbo button on the back of the boards. So basically, on the back where you have your HDMI and I.O. ports, you have a button and it's called a turbo button. Now, if you do click it, what it does is it will boost the performance of your cards. Uh, but how it actually works is it loads a different BIOS on the board. So it's a BIOS switch, which is a feature that's pretty expensive, actually, in most brands here uh, in Europe and in the US as well. So that I kind of like. And it's full of memes about it online because a lot of people say this button does nothing. And since it's also on very cheap cars, like on 1050 Ti's, people think it's not a serious matter, but it's a bias switch button, which is pretty cool technology. Now, the reason why people say it does nothing is it works on the curve like any BIOS does. And uh, if you've been around the channel a while, you know we work a lot with curves on GPUs to make them work better. And the problem is if you're hitting thermal limits, it doesn't matter what curve you have, the card is going to downclock itself either way. And that helps me transition to the next topic, which is going to be thermal acoustics, how they perform. Now, we do have to make a pretty big difference because, again, just like Asus has their tough, their entry level and their Strix models, again, they have the normal, colorful, just unbranded, ugly looking card. And then they have the iGame, they have the Vulcan, and they have a lot of lineups that come out and go. Now, the higher end models generally perform better, but even there, especially on the 3000 series, if you scout the web a while, you will find the issues with memory temps on certain cars. But that, again, was a pretty popular thing back in the day because with RTX 3000, we had the switch from GDDR6 to GDDR6X and the memory chips were drawing up a lot more power. So just kind of like Zotac failed with their design, Colorful had issues on some cars as well with memory temperature, but it is now fixed on the RTX 4000. However, their lower end unbranded cars do run pretty hot and they are among the worst performers in terms of temperature and noise for lower end cars. They are lower end cars, so it matters less. If you have a 1050 Ti that goes to 35 degrees instead of 70, it's not going to be that big of an issue. And you can also replace thermal paste all the time. And keep in mind, these are cars that are aiming at a different market. And their higher end models, again, are pretty good. Honestly, the only segment I would probably stay away from, but again, I haven't actually tested a 4090 from Colorful. I have tested 3000 series cars and lower end 4000, would probably be the 4090. The only reason I would stay away from it is because 
on the high end, especially if you're going for high overclocks, or maybe a custom look, then PCB design really starts to matter. And I don't know how the components are. Any of you guys know and have had a high end card, like a, for, example, for example, a 3090 that you put underwater or a 4090, and you are certain that the PCB is good, or if you do have pictures of the PCB, please drop a comment and let me know because that's honestly something I don't know yet. But for the mid to high range, for example, a 4070 Super, 4080, uh, cars like that, I would definitely buy it, honestly, if I was in Asia or on the used market. Now, why am I saying if I was in their market or on the used market? Well, because a big issue if you're buying a colorful or high game card here in Europe or in the US or in the West in general is gonna be warranty. I have recently done um, a video on warranty of PC parts, which kind of ties into this. So if you want to go check it out, it's on the channel, but basically, if I were buying a colorful or eye game card, I wouldn't trust the warranty from the manufacturer. Why? Not because they, they don't provide good service. I'm sure they do, and I have actually scouted the internet online, even for the Asian RMAs, and I see they work. They take a while, maybe 40 days, which is not ideal, but uh, honestly, even bigger brands like Asus do take a lot, and uh, I haven't had the best experience with them either. But the problem is gonna be, if you are located in, in the US or in Italy, like I am, for example, and you have to send the card all the way back to China because there's not a center in Italy that repairs them or that handles them, it's gonna be a nightmare. So if you're gonna buy them brand new, you definitely wanna have warranty from a reputable retailer that you know if there is a problem is not just gonna pass the RMA to the original factory and they have to firsthand replace your card. That's what you want if you wanna buy them new. Because I think the price difference in general is definitely there, they are a bit cheaper, but since they are targeted toward the Asian market, they have import costs. And so their cheaper models end up not being that much cheaper than our cheap models here, and their higher end models really are a bit cheaper. But again, if you're buying a high end card brand new, you probably do want some warranty. So that's what I would be careful about. However, if you're in the used market, like we do often here at MOTPS used for budget bills, and you're looking to buy a used graphics card, and you find an iGame 3080, for example, which looks nice and is treated well, and you can go there, test out the card, make sure the card is working before you buy it, and the warranty is expired either way because the card is like three or four years old, then I think you should buy it just like you would buy any other brand. So that's my final opinion on it. I would definitely buy them and I have bought them on the used market if they do come up for good prices. Also because other people maybe are a bit scared, they don't want them so you can get them for even cheaper. I wouldn't buy them brand new if I was here. If I was in Asia, I would probably buy them. They're a good brand and get my pass, but also, Look online for the certain model before you buy it. Maybe with Google Translate, but you will find material on it and you can see, just like you would see with any other manufacturer, if that specific model has temperature issues or fan issues or something like that. But the cars they've had have been fine. They're still running to this day. So they're not plagued by the fan issues like Inno 3D has been for me. And honestly, they get my recommendation. But if you do have a different opinion, or if you do have an experience which uh, solidifies with my opinion, please drop a comment because in this series of video, I really hope every video could become a place to exchange some information and really get to the bottom of every single card if someone needs it. And also maybe drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. We do budget builds, undervolts, overclocks, mods, and other things on the channel. And yes, I also wash PSUs. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.